Hello, Sri Yadia Kandi Bhagwan Ki Jai. Here we are at my little altar in my hermitage, still getting over this cough and cold. But being the week going into Shiva Ratri, I thought it would be a good time to read a little bit from the Shiva Purana. And this is from the Shiva Purana, retold by Ramesh Menon. It begins by saying, Shiva is worshipped both as Morti and Linga, says Sutta, who is the narrator of the Shiva Purana. Sunaka, one of the rishis, said, All the other gods are worshipped just as idols. Why is only Shiva worshipped as both Lingam and image? Sutta says, Shiva alone is Nishkala, nameless and formless, as well as Sakala, embodied. In his formlessness, he is worshipped as the Shiva Lingam. Long ago in the first Kalpa, Shiva revealed his Nishkala form as a Linga, and since then he is worshipped as such. Listen. Once, Ush Vishnu, thousand-headed, thousand-armed, with his Sankha, Chakra, and Gada, lay asleep on Ananta, upon the primordial sea. The universe lay dissolved all around. As he slept, a lotus with an endless golden stalk thrust itself out from his navel. Brahma, grandsire of the worlds, was born within this umbilical lotus from Vishnu's golden womb. Brahma roamed that lotus for a hundred years, but could not climb out of it. He began to climb down the infinite stalk, but he did not reach the place from where the flower grew. Then a disembodied voice said to him, Tapasya is your way. Brahma then sat in meditation for thousands of years. One day he found himself at his father, Mahavishnu's side. Vishnu lay asleep, but he shone like Kala, and his and he breathed like Chasmal time. Striking the sleeping blue, blue god with his hand, Brahma said, Who are you? You lie there hotly, even when you see me. Don't you know who I am? Vishnu was furious. However, controlling himself, he said calmly, Welcome, my son. Tell me, where have you come from and why are you so agitated? Sit here and tell me, said Vishnu, patting his serpent bed. I have come as swiftly as time. I am the creator. How dare you call me my son as a guru does his shisha? I am the pitama, yours as well. I create, protect, and destroy the universe. Vishnu replied languidly, You, my son, were born from me. Brahma, I am your father. The lotus in which you were born sprouted from my navel. But no matter, my own maya deludes you. At which Brahma struck him again, and a terrific fight erupted. They first fought like common men with fists and rough punches. Then Vishnu mounted his eagle and Brahma his white swan and they fought with Astra's cosmic weapons. The devas gathered in the sky in their silvery chariots to watch the battle. Vishnu hurled the Mahesh Astra at Brahma, who unleashed the unfathomable Pasup Astra. These missiles spooned into the sky and blazing like 10,000 suns locked on high. As the devas watched in horror, flames from the astras began to consume the three realms. Suddenly, between the two maddened gods, a column sprung up from the ground. A column from nowhere, without top or base. A column of light and fire into which the apocalyptic astras were absorbed like two sparks. It was a lingam with thousands of garlands of flames 
flames like galaxies spewing in every direction, an incomparable, incomprehensible lingam. Awestruck, Vishnu and Brahma fell quiet. Brahma breathed, what is it? Mahavishnu whispered, it is beyond me. You find its head while I seek its root. Turning into a golden boar, Vishnu drove down through the ground of that first battlefield to seek the root of this mysterious lingam of fire. Brahma became a swan and flew up at the speed of time, quicker than light, to seek the top of that manifestation. For the longer than we can even conceive, the boar dove down and the swan flashed up. But above or below, there was no end to the blazing palace. Exhausted and frightened, Vishnu came back to the battlefield. Brahma kept flying up. When Shiva saw the, the two gods so distraught in their arrogance, he laughed and dislodged the kataki flowers from his head, which fell down that infinite column. Down wafted these flowers, turning around one another, falling countless divine years like a blessing, with neither fragrance nor brightness dimmed. They fell over Brahma, the flashing feathered ascender in petal rain. Perplexed Brahma, the swan said, Lord of flowers, from whose head do you fall down this column? Why do you fall good flowers? The flower said, friend, we have been falling forever and we do not remember where we began. How will you find the column's pinnacle? Tired and annoyed as he was, Brahma had a thought. He bowed to the kataki flowers and said, humbly, friends, a small favor for me. Tell Vishnu I saw the top of the linga and that you bear witness to it. In dire straits, falsehood is recommended by even the oldest lore. They found Mahavishnu in distress and Brahma smiled. Vishnu said ruefully, I could not find the root of the linga. Brahma replied smugly, I found the column's head. These takaki flowers are my witness. Ha. Vishnu bowed to Brahma. He worshipped him with all his 16 homages. When he lay in the dust to worship Brahma's feet, a tremendous aum resounded in that place, a thunderclap that would shatter the universe. She best stepped out of the linga, taller than the, the linga of fire, a wild matted yogin, bright as a brilliant sun. He stood before the terrified gods with bow and trident, wearing tiger skin, a shining serpent, the sacred thread around his body. He seemed to swallow the heavens with his million mouths the elm still dying in his blue throat, like the battery of thunder that heralds the final deluge in which the star is drawn. From that vision's brow, from his third eye, sprang the dread, dreadful Bhairava. Bhairava knelt at Shiva's feet. Command me, almighty Lord. Shiva said, here is Brahma, the first god of creation. Worship him with your sword. With a roar, Bhairavi seized the tuft on Brahma's fifth head, the one that had lied to Vishnu and raised his carved blade. Brahma howled. He sweated. He trembled and fell whimpering at Bhairava's feet. Bhairava's arm was drawn back to take off the lying head of Brahma. Then Vishnu knelt at Shiva's feet. Lord, you gave him five heads, part of him in your infinite mercy. This is his first offense. Shiva blessed Vishnu. Vishnu, you were truthful, though you also wanted to be the Lord of all things. From now, you will have as much worship as I do. But this liar shall not be worshipped anymore or have a temple of his own in this world. Bhairava released Brahma and the chastened God prostrated before Shiva. Lord, I'm humbled, now bless me. Shiva said musingly, 
The universe is ruled, is ruined without the fear of a king. Rule the universe from now on, Brahma, and be the Lord of sacrifices. That day, Brahma and Vishnu first worshipped Shiva. Ever after that day, when Mahadev is worshipped as both Lingam and, and Murti, the Bhakti who fasts day and night on holy Shivaratri, who worships the Lord and deceives no one, he will have the blessings of a full year of ordinary worship. Shiva made the blazing lingam without root or tip, diminutive and quiescent. He installed it upon a yoni pedestal, which is Uma. Never again did Shiva wear the kataki flower on his head. Mahashiva Mata Ki, excuse me, Mahashiva Mahadeva Ki Jai. Bule Baba Ki Jai.